हरिओ ओ सहना सहनो भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावह ओ शांति 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 श्रुतिस्मृति पुराणा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः समस्त निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ श्री चिन्मय सद्गुरव नम हरि ओम in general it is said that the <clears throat> knowledge of brahma is the ultimate knowledge most difficult to get in this world is brahma anubhava or to become brahma vid the question is if the brahma is the ultimate reality then why it is so difficult to experience first of all the only people on which we can rely upon for the brahmanubhava are the brahmanubhavita or brahma vid rushis munis or the saintly people the only scripture that we can rely upon is supposed to be the ved and what is ved saying what are the saints saying what are the rushis and munis saying it is unfathomable it is not understandable it is a nirguna nirakara it is beyond the scope of the buddhi <coughs> सत्यम अनंत ज्ञान ब्रह्म द मोस्ट पर्प्लेक्सिंग क्वेश्चन अबाउट ब्रह्मानुभूति इज इट इज नॉट एन अनुभव सी वाय कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ब्रह्म एंड ब्रह्म अनुभूति इज extremely difficult to digest is because how can there be an experience where the experiencer is absent all my life all my previous births if they are existing i have been subjected to only one kind of experience where i am the one who is experiencing the things i am constantly standing away from the thing that is to be experienced in other words if i call the entire thing to be experienced as world the objects the subjects and everything other than me everything is world for me <clears throat> 
the dream is a world for me because i say i was in the dream that means the dream is not me dream is separate i was in the sleep sleep is separate all these states or avastha objects or vastu subjects or jivas i interact with all of them are they and me unless that or they and me is there i cannot have experience there is no one in the sleep that is also not there no objects are there they are not there no subjects are there there is no experience in the sleep but in the sleep i am also not there so in shastriya paribhasha this equipment required for experience called karya dhyasa is i have to be there something else has to be there and some interaction has to be there while in case of brahma it is said that it is the only one if that is the only one then if i want to experience the brahma if i want to take the brahma anubhuti where will i be <clears throat> i am also included in the brahma <clears throat> when the experiencer is included in the experience how can that be an experience <clears throat> object and subject pramata and prameya if these are two are not existing and yet the experience is taking place how it can happen the subject unless it is a subject experience cannot happen brahma includes the subject object experience of all kinds let's take a small example to know how difficult it is to conceive even the brahma i eat good food and i become happy <clears throat> it's an experience if i change that and i watch something a beautiful scenery and i feel happy that means my happiness is divided in each experience i had a good sleep i feel better happy so there is one happiness of getting after sleep deep sleep there is one happiness of eating good food there is one happiness of having seen a beautiful scenery there is one happiness of feeling that i have purchased or owned an object all the happiness is divided into different different experiences now imagine all the happiness is brought into one place all all different types of happinesses have been brought into one place and i want to experience it what will be the experience i cannot even imagine all the happiness of the world all the experiences of happy experiences of all the individuals are brought all into one bowl and i am experiencing it what will be the situation <clears throat> even this we can't imagine that means we even in imagination we feel short of imagining something where there is no experience yet there is experience if the experiencer is the part of the experience then what will be that type of experience
because everything is included in one entity called brahma then me knowing me would be the only experience but experience presupposes something that is experienced by somebody who is experiencing now if i experiencing myself is the situation then in this situation how to distinguish between object and subject experiencer and experienced in other words it would be a situation where i know myself knowing myself is i then how can you know yourself do we ever say that with our name that look today i am enjoying the experience of being dr jado i don't experience dr jado i just know i am dr jado when you know that you know that you know you are it is knowing the knowing how can you know the know but yes there is an experience if at all it can be called as an experience that is the reason why the vedas and the saints and the rushis and the munis and the upanishads are saying that it can't be described neti neti naiti 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 why this vedas are saying because there is nothing parallel to brahma anubhava in fact the word brahma and anubhava brought together as brahma anubhava is itself wrong all my life and my previous and my births future etc etc i am only used to me as an experience world as an object to be experienced for me i cannot even imagine a situation where there is an experience without an experiencer first of all if the experiencer is not there can you really call it as an experience when pramata is pramatru or pramata is not there can it be a gnana there is a there is a glass bowl lying on the table moment you say there is a glass bowl lying on the table you presuppose that somebody is describing it as an experience so somebody has seen the glass bowl on the table now imagine there is no one who has seen the glass bowl can you make a statement that there is a glass bowl on the table to say that somebody has to be there some experience or somebody who has observed watched seen that bowl can only say that i have seen the bowl there is a glass bowl on the table no one in the world is watching and there is a glass bowl on the table what statement will you make there will be nobody to make the statement now if this is the situation when there is an unobserved object the object is not upalabdh anupalabdhi abhav 
when the witnessing person is not there when witnesser is not there then the question of existence itself comes into a big dilemma if this is the case then imagine if glass bowl himself is trying to talk about glass bowl himself saying that i am on the top of the table is it possible for glass bowl to be identified there has to be somebody who is other than glass bowl but in case of brahma they say that brahma is only one then who gets the brahma gyan that which is distant from me can be a subject of knowledge that which is not at all distant from me which is within me or which is me myself how can that be a subject or object of knowledge this is the most difficult question that is the reason why <coughs> brahma sutra <coughs> retains its <coughs> prime position why it retains the prime position answer to this question that brahma gnana is not an experience of the kind which we have experienced so far is given through cryptic utterances apparently contradictory in upanishads first of all the brahma as a subject has been discussed only on a tattva gnana level in the last part or the vedanta or the upanishad part of the vedas as we move forward in the vedas the crystallization of knowledge regarding brahma or atma is mentioned in distributed pearls of wisdom sometimes in very very contradictory terms sometimes in a very short and abbreviated terse form in upanishads creating hell lot of confusion amongst these stalwarts to sort that out brahma sutra is written so brahma sutra doesn't go here and there directly head on takes the subject of whether first of all brahma is there or not one two is it the ultimate reality or time related reality three if it is existing what are its characteristics and fourth what is the point in knowing the brahman if i am not going to attain it fifth why at all i should attain it when i am living my life right now and sixth the methodology of attaining brahma gnana a is saying something else b is saying something else how do i reconcile this reconciliation is samanvaya adhikarana <coughs> that is why something that is almost challenging the intellect to its extreme presupposes that the intellect has to be of the highest order to study this subject we need to understand why brahma sutra or brahma gnana paroksha gnana also is difficult why you are trying to study the ultimate reality in the world naturally it is going to be the most challenging aspect of thinking when thought process is challenged to the extreme capacity it goes without saying that the intellect has to be highly developed penetrating and as much all compassive as possible how that such kind of intellect can be developed in other words 
डल विटेड डल विटेड नॉट इन द व्यवहार डल विटेड इन स्पिरिचुअल फील्ड इन डल विटेड इन स्पिरिचुअल फील्ड इज फार मोर इंटेलिजेंट दैन द फाइनेस्ट इंटेलिजेंट स्पेसिमेन ऑफ द व्यवहारिक विश्व डल विटेड स्पिरिचुअल फील्ड पर्सन इज कॉल्ड कनिष्ठ अधिकारी कनिष्ठ अधिकारी शुड नॉट स्टडी ब्रह्म सूत्र ही शुड स्टिल कैरी ऑन विथ उपासना सगुन उपासना आफ्टर सम टाइम टाइम मीन्स मे बी फ्यू बर्थ वेन द इंटेलेक्ट गेट्स फर्दर डेवलप्ड स्ट्रॉगर पावरफुल देन ही बिकम्स मध्यम अधिकारी मध्यम अधिकारी कैन डायरेक्टली स्टार्ट विथ डिसिप्लिनिंग हिमसेल्फ थ्रू यम नियमाज बिकॉज विवेक वैराग्य हेज बीन प्रैक्टिस लिटिल अर्लियर सो मध्यम अधिकारी देन बिकम्स पावरफुल अंडरस्टैंड मोर अबाउट द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द यूनिवर्स द वे इट फंक्शन प्रकृति अंतर्गत तत्वज्ञान ही विल कम टू नो ब्रह्मज्ञान इज प्रकृति बाह्य तत्वज्ञान आफ्टर द वन हू हैज मास्टर्ड द विवेक वैराग्य एंड शमदमादि षटक और यम नियम दैट इंटलेक्ट देन स्टार्ट गेटिंग द फाइनल फ्रॉन्टीयर ऑफ डाइसेक्टिंग द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ अल्टीमेट रियालिटी and that the stage when it happens is called atha ataha brahma jignasa now now means after that you have completed now you are capable now your intellect is penetrating sharp enough <coughs> we shall have dissection of jignasa about brahma now let me tell you what brahman is which you for you are so far been contemplating about so then comes the question what is brahma that from which everything arises the world is a part of it universe is not a big deal now we are looking at a mammoth scale universe is just a bubble they keep coming and they keep bursting look at the vyapti the width the 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 extent that is why it is called brahma bruhat brudhatu is ever expanding bigger a part of which is the universe the origin of all this is janma adi asya yatah yatah this world is that brahma how, how the brahma's lakshan is made directly nothing is ascribed to the brahma brahma is the one which gives birth to no 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 no, no. we are completely mistaken brahma does not do anything janma adi asya yatah asya again shashti we saw that all these creations world universe etc are related to brahma or they are because of brahma sarp adhyas has happened on the rope if the rope wouldn't have been there where is the question of sarp if the brahma wouldn't have been there where is the question of vishwa jaga but the rope hasn't created the snake snake appeared on the rope the creation appeared on the brahma so there is an allegation that rope is brahma rope gave rise to the birth of sarpa no jagat was born on brahma no there is no birth at all you 
are feeling certainly that there is a world and you are a part of it is your brahma adhyasa you got drunk and you started feeling that the buildings are moving buildings are not moving your perception is that the building is moving so your perception is that the world is on brahma or it has come from brahma from building standpoint the drunkard is swaying the building is steady from the brahma standpoint nothing is created why will rope say that there is a snake created on me it will not because it hasn't seen the serpent at all those who are seeing the serp are saying that the rope has created the serp those who are all at the serp at the rope level they say where is serp gauda pad maharaj was staying in the rope so he said what kind of question are you asking me about this world there is no world it is not born at all you are complaining to me about the sukham dukham and on the all this birth and all that. it hasn't happened ajat it has been not been born only now the biggest challenge is from the illusory world from the adhyasita vishwa from the apparent world from the snake world somebody called a satsang of people are trying to study what the rope is what the brahma is that means a deluded person is trying to know about what is the state of non deludement a drunkard is trying to see what is sensibleness won't it be difficult it will be difficult why brahma sutra is difficult because deluded person is trying to see sanity insane person is trying to know about what sanity is deeply embedded in insanity sanity is very difficult to be known but for some punyam even though deluded even though under maya bandhana it is possible to know the lakshana of the brahma now brahma does it have any guna so it is nirguna nirakara there is no quality at all there is no quality there is no quality i understand but is there any characteristics at least any lakshana guna and lakshana they are like cause and effect rajoguna is the cause ati utsah is a lakshan constantly doing this and that is a lakshana cause rajoguna so lakshana at least helps us in catching a person gunas take time to know so can we attribute some lakshana to brahma or not is the next question lakshanam brahmano asti kiwa nasti nahi vidyate we do not know whether the brahma has lakshana or not characters or not lakshanas are of two types tatastha lakshana and swarupa lakshana tatastha lakshana means that lakshana which is not padarth antarbhut it is not the part of the laksha yet it indicates that particular padarth has different than others which is called vyavruttata all this complicated definition of tatastha lakshana can be simplified by one thing when you want to point out to devadatta's home we can say that that home on which there is a crow sitting is devadatta's home now is crow a part of the home no but it helps in identifying devadatta's home 
compared to the other homes. So crow is called tatastha lakshana. It is not padartha antargata, yet it does a vavrutti of that particular padartha. And what is Swarupa Lakshana? That which is square for 40 feet by 20 feet, having a uh, tiles on the top, having three windows, one door and one door on the back side. Swarupa Lakshana of Devadatta's home. Can there be, is there a Lakshana for Brahma or not? There is. But something which is Nirguna, how can it have Lakshana? The question is very valid. If there is no guna, there cannot be lakshana. No? If there is no cause, there is no effect. How can a Brahma have lakshana? It's all dissecting thoughts by thoughts. How can Brahma have lakshana? Shastrakar says, yes, it has lakshana. How? Kalpita Sambandha can give rise to Lakshana. Kalpita Sambandha. Rope is lying in the darkness, semi-darkness. Sarpa is realized on that. And then what do we say? Oh, it's a very long snake. Did you see that? What happened? Rope had no Lakshana of Sarpa at all because it was not Sarpa only. But now, Length of the snake as a lakshana is attributed to the rope. Similarly, since the world appears on the Brahma, the characteristics of the world are ascribed to the Brahma, though they are not Brahma's characteristics. Example, Brahmam Satyam. Is Brahma Satya? It is not Satya, it is not Asatya, it is not anything. We cannot even imagine such a thing. Because we are used to Satya Asatya. Small, big, Santa Ananta. Ultimately, how do I call the Brahman by what name? How do I describe it? The only choice left for me is to ascribe the Lakshana of Jagat on or Adhyasa on the Brahma. That is how Kalpita Bandhanan, Brahma and Jagat has a Kalpita Bandhana. Rope and the snake has Kalpita Bandhana. Kalpita Bandhana then produces a Lakshana, both Tatastha as well as Swarupa Lakshana. Satyam Jnanam Anantam is its Swarupa Lakshana. And Brahma does everything. I am, Lord Krishna says, I am into everything. Everything is done by me, but they are not in me. What is this business? They are not in me. They are not in me is Swarupa Lakshana. I am in them. That is the Lakshana. That is the reason why the next question that comes is, Acharya says, Nacha yathokta visheshanasya jagataha yathokta visheshana ishwaram uktva anyataha pradhanat achetanat anubhyova abhavat sausarinova utpatyadi sambhaviyutum sambhava Sambhava itum shakyam. Acharya says, in this sausar or the world, the origin, <clears throat> the sustenance of the world and the dissolution, Utpatti, Sthiti, Laya of Vishwa are difficult to imagine unless <clears throat> we imagine some Sarvadnya Ishwara. Prakruti is achetan. In Sankhya Tattvadhyan, Prakruti is called matter is achetan. Achetan cannot produce its own world. Sankhya Tattvadhyan does say 
that this world is created by prakruti prakruti is anadi she does it because purusha doesn't do anything so prakruti on its own and at the same time it says prakruti is achetana acharya is asking a question how achetana prakruti pradhanat achetana prakruti is achetana how it she will create everything anubhyo va abhavat anubhyo now she is pointing to anu means parmanu vaisheshika darshan what is the rule of what is the philosophy of vaisheshika darshan the ultimate and indivisible particle is called parmanu so how is this world form from the parmanu the parmanus come together and they create dvainaka trainyuka so they became they they become two three their their triads come together and then each vastu is formed it's quite a deep philosophy well founded philosophy vaisheshika the origin of the world according to them is parmanu acharya is saying all of a sudden a parmanu starts forming world how will that happen unless there is a chetana shakti behind it all of a sudden the prakruti starts forming the world through trigunas from the samya avastha it gets disturbed and the world but who disturbs the samya avastha who brings in the prakruti who initiates the prakruti to start after starting maybe she is going on her own fine but who starts it that is the reason who is the karta of the jagat for the karya to happen there has to be a karana <clears throat> see this is a very debatable issue in indian philosophy do we really need god or we don't need god we all know karma siddhanta from anadi kal adnyana is there that is why all jivas are born that is what the philosophy says or for whatever reason we are born and we are continuing through transmigration through birth and death birth and death we are moving forward why this is happening is because of the karma so you do karma there will be karma phala in order to have that phalam you will be given a shariram again you will do karma again phalam again shariram so there is a law that is taking place pancha mahabhutas will come together they will form pancha sukshma tanmatra will form the pancha mahabhuta pancha mahabhuta will give rain water sorry rain fire uh, uh, the five elements will be there they will create the srushti the srushti upabhog will be taken by the jiva this is all already laid down by rules when everything is going down as per the discipline and the rule which is immutable why do you need a controller again when the office is working because everybody knows their work why do you require a ceo no but ceo is required because if somebody is not working there is already inherent inbuilt system if somebody is not working he is condemned to the lower berth if somebody is working in a wrong way he is punished if sir somebody is working in a good way he is rewarded papam punyam is already there everything is well set and it's going on yantra rudha ani maya ya it's going on but the lord says yantra rudha ni because of me there is a controller niyanta so this whether a niyanta is required or not required jain तत्वज्ञान बुद्ध पूर्व मीमांसा सांख्य दे डोंट दे डोंट से देर इज ईश्वर दिस ईश्वर इज नॉट नीडेड दिस इज अ डिसिप्लिन थिंग किप्स ऑन गोइंग ऑन इट्स ओन देर इज नो नीड ऑफ ईश्वर एट ऑल इवन पूर्व मीमांसा it says just go as as per vedas everything has been laid down there are yajnas there are karmas you keep doing it that's it why do you require an ishwara if this is the case acharya says 
although everything is going as per the discipline, for the discipline to be put into the place, there has to be somebody. Through Trigunas, Prakruti is evolving. All right. But for Prakruti to start evolving, somebody must be there as an initiator who again in turn happens to be the controller because the one who initiates also controls. Ishatva. There has to be some lordship. Lordship is Ishatva is Ishwara. That is why he says, Nacha Sobhavataha Vishishta Desha Kala Nimittanam Iha Upadanat. Etat Eva Anumanam Sansara Vetarikta Ishwara Astitwadi Sadhanam Manyate Ishwara Vadinaha. Acharya says, That is why for all that is bound by Vishishta Desha Nimitta and Kala. What is Desha Nimitta Kala? The space, time and the one who does a thing. Nimitta. Karana. So Karana, cause, space and time. These three always are presupposed for anything to happen. Any karya to happen. For any function, any karya, any karma, Desha Kala Nimitta. Desha, it has to happen in some spe special configuration. A Karya is happening nowhere. Cannot happen. Karya has to happen somewhere. Somewhere is space. And at some point of time, Kala. And somebody has to do it. That means Karya requires three things. Desha, Nimitta, Kala. Now, when I am speaking, Desha is in this place called Dubai on a sofa at a place where I am sitting. This is my special configuration. Kala, early morning at 5.30. Nimitta, my body. So Desha Nimitta Kal is creating this Karya. Whenever there is Desha Nimitta Kal, there has to be the Lord of all the three. The Lord of all the three is called Ishwar. The one who ensures that when space, time and the reason, cause, comes together, a karya happens. This is a scene, overseen, controlled by the controller, the ruler, the Ishwara. And this is, Acharya says, this is quite logical by Anumana. If karya is happening, there must be a karana. Anumana. If Karya is happening, it must be happening somewhere. Anuman. If the Karya is happening, it must be happening at a particular point of time. Anuman. That means Anuman is a Pramana for knowing the Ishwara. The real point that the Shankaracharya is coming is the next one. He says Ishwara is Anumanita. Presence or requirement of Ishwara is based on a logical conclusion or Anuman. That if something is happening at some point of time because of somebody, there must be somebody who is controlling all this. So by Anuman, Ishwara is proved. But Brahma is not proved by Anuman. This is where Acharya takes a jump beyond the Ishwara. See, the philosophical fight Acharya is having with all other Acharyas put together. All Darshanas, all Shastras, all everything. Shankara Acharya is taking Advaita as completely different position. And the position is Deshakala Nimittanam Ishwara Bhavati. But what if Desha Kala Nimitta is not there? Where will we Ishwara be? He will not be required. In other words, if the creation is not there, why do you require a controller of the creation? That is where Acharya says, till the time creation is there, Ishwara is supreme. 
and till the time the world is there means maya is there because creation is nothing else but maya that means maya comes into the existence immediately ishwara comes into the existence mayo padhita chaitanya is ishwar maya upadhi means first the upadhi has to be there then only the one who is taking that upadhi will be there he'll be delineated so ishwara his presence is not denied by shankaracharya that is why he has written umpteen number of sutras on all the gods but he is not happy with his position as far as knowing brahma is concerned because ishwara his existence relevance importance is only when there is karya dhyasa when karya is not there what will karana do and karya karana bhava beyond that is brahma that is why brahma is not the karan of the vishwa because when vishwa will go brahma will also then go away because when karya dhyasa is not there where will the karan go karan also will not exist karan nivrutti will happen brahma never there is no nivrutti ishwara has nivrutti that is why the one who is a yogi or a bhakta or gnani he keeps on expanding his consciousness and reaches the level of ishwara ishwara tulya ramakrishna paramahansa used to say that six of his shishyas were ishwara koti ishwara koti means they were like god only except that utpatti samvara and laya was not given in their hands they were ishwara only but ishwara's presence is still what time till maya is there when maya is done padakrant when maya is transcended automatically ishwara gets transcended that is why again and again shankaracharya is reiterating that narayana shri krishna whatever you give me the give the name they are all gods within the mayopadhita vishwa that is why he says same logic of anuman is not used in brahma sutra because vedanta vakya is kusuma grath grathanarthatvat sutranam all the sutras scattered in the upanishads are collected and then done vakyartha vicharana vakyartha vicharana adhyavasana nivrutta hi brahma avagati na anumanaadi pramanantara nivrutta after deliberation vicharya of this brahma sutra brahmanu bhav is the outcome not by anuman you can't do logical guessing for brahma ishwar is siddh by anuman brahma cannot be proved by anuman this is the basic difference between ishwara and brahma that is why there is a difference in dharma jignyasa and brahma jignyasa and very subtly this point has been mentioned in bhagavad gita also brahma sutra says na dharma jignyasayam eva shrutyadaya eva pramanam brahma jignyasayam for dharma jignyasa shruti is the praman but for brahma jignyasa shruti is not praman what is the meaning of this तस्मात् शास्त्र प्रमाण ये कार्य अकार्य व्यवस्थित दिस इज भगवदगीता श्लोक इन दैवासुर संपत्ति द लास्ट श्लोक इट सेज तस्मा शास्त्र प्रमाण कार्य अकार्य व्यवस्थित 
ज्ञात्वा शास्त्र विधानोक्त कर्म करतुम इह अर्हसी भगवद गीता से शास्त्र इज प्रमाण फॉर कार्य अकार्य दैट मीन्स फॉर द कर्म That doesn't mean Veda is useless for Brahma Jnana. No, not that meaning should not be taken into the mind. But Dharma Jnana Sayam iti Shrutya Adaya, because Shruti is tells about what to do, what not to do is only for the karma. Then what about Upanishads? Upanishads do not say what to do, what to do. For example, Satyam Anantam Jnana Brahma. That is the Upanishad. what is it saying it is saying something it is not asking us to do anything but if you go to samvita brahmana mantra portion it says do this yajna then you will get this don't do this don't while doing this did everywhere there are instructions to do to do means karma so dharma jignyasayam shruti pramanam brahma jignyasayam shruti is an indicator दिशा दर्शक सत्यम अनंतम ब्रह्म आई रेड इट हंड्रेड थाउजंड मिलियन टाइम्स वॉट विल हैपन नथिंग विल हैपन अनलेस आई डू विचार ऑन दैट दैट मीन्स इंडिकेटर इज कमिंग फ्रॉम उपनिषद रेस्ट इज माय ओन वर्क माय व्हाट काइंड ऑफ माय ओन वर्क माय विचार देन विचार आई एम डूइंग एवरी डे विचार नॉट धिस विचार यू शुड हैव इंटेलेक्ट डेवलप फॉर दैट विचार विच कैन अंडरस्टैंड दि वेदिक utterances given in the upanishada that is the reason shravanam shravanam mananam what we say we keep wondering every day we are doing shravanam and the shastra is always telling mahavakya shravanam is enough for mukti what is enough for mukti because shravanam is supposed to lead to that thinking not the ordinary thinking it is supra ordinary thinking happening by that intellect when the other stage of authority is passed then through vichar exactly that is what gurudev used to do early morning all night he used to be thinking only about brahma how to think by concentrating all the vrittis on the realization aspect how it can be how brahma gyan can happen how atma gyan how sakshatkar can happen and that is why that deep concentration which gurudeva actually gave the name white heat of meditation so it is vicharaarya what did gurudev do as per shruti so that he got the brahmadnyan we will not get anything there in the shruti what he did he did through vichara that much only we can say that means shruti दयो अनुभवात् यश्च यथा संभव इह प्रमाण श्रुत्यादयो अनुभवात् दैट मीन श्रुति अलोंग विद अनुभव इज प्रमाण फॉर ब्रह्म विद्या ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा सो परोक्ष ज्ञान ऑफ ब्रह्म यू गेट फ्रॉम श्रुति अपरोक्ष इज अनुभूति परोक्षता ते श्रुति ही अपरोक्षता ते अनुभूति हाउ कम इट इज लाइक दिस वेन वेदास आर सपोज टू बी द लास्ट दिस लास्ट दिस एक्सेट्रा वाई वाई दिस स्टेटमेंट हेज कम इन दाष्यम वाई दिस स्टेटमेंट हेज कम फ्रॉम भाष्यम इन शंकराचार्य ही इज गिविंग एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर इट पुरुषाधीन आत्मलाभत्वाच्य कर्तव्य कर्तव्य ही विषय न अनुभव अपेक्षा अस्ति एव प्रामान्यम सैत व्हाट इट मीन्स इज पुरुषाधीन आत्मलाभत्वाच कर्तव्य व्हाट एवर इज टू बी ऑप्टेन्ड देर इज समथिंग विच आई वांट टू ऑप्टेन प्राप्ति दैट मीन्स दैट विच आई एम सपोज टू ऑप्टेन इज बियॉन्ड मी example i want to enjoy swarga swarga is right now not obtained by me i want to obtain there is a prapti ichha of swarga then dharma jignyasa tells me you do this 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 dhyajna you will get swarga i want to have a santana i want to have a baby 
then you do this particular yajna you will get a baby or a santan prapta vyartham dharma jignasa now let us see whether brahma is a praptavya or not is brahma something like an object to be obtained by me it is not why it is me what who what is brahma brahma is all all in, includes me also so if i am the person i am the one all are one everything is one and that is what i want to experience it is not praptavyata it is only anubhuti i have to only intellectually understand that i am brahma i don't have to obtain the brahma that which is obtained praptavyartham dharma jignasa that is why vedas can indicate the brahma but anubhuti has to be through vichar nitya prapta vastu is brahma nitya prapta cannot be again prapta where is atma it is you where is brahma it is you what is already you how can you then try to obtain it you cannot that is why nitya prapta is experienced a prapya a prapta not a prapya a prapya is impossible to attain a prapta is to be obtained for that dharma jignasa is there all the shruti is there for that again the sadhya or that which you want to obtain either that vastu is created or obtained by human endeavor purusha karm if i want to buy a car it is purusha karma i will earn the money and then buy the car if i want to attain swarga sukham i will do lot of the uh, yajna tapa dana karma and obtain punya and from punya i will get swarga that means the sadhya is purusha karma when that is why laukik karma vaidik karma is always kartum akartum anyathava kartru shakya that means either you can do something you cannot do something or you can it can be done either way these are the only choices possible while doing that is why in veda in dharma jignasa in the mantra that is why Purva Pimasa does not give any importance to Vedanta. It says that is those are only utterances of Rishis. It gives importance to the first three part, Karma Kanda, the Mantra Brahman Samvida. In that there are instructions given, like Ati Ratri Yadnya Shodashi. Ati Ratri Yadnya Shodashi means in Ati Ratri Yadnya Shodashi means glass in which Somaras is there. how to hold it by the hand or whether to not to hold it by the hand there is an instruction so that is why shruti gives instructions for yajna that is meant for dharma jignasa that is because it is purusha karma pradhan purusha tantra that is why in shruti either there is a vidhi vidhi means karma pravrutti par vakya for example those who are aspiring for swarga they will do jyotishtom yajna so this is called vidhi pratishedha karma nivrutti par vakya for example sura panam nishiddha nobody should drink liquor it is pratishedha vakya vikalpa vakya vikalpa vakya means you can do this or you can do that that udaharnartha in samidha you can either use tandula or tilam both either can be used so this is called vikalpa vakya utsarga vakya is a samanya niyama for example the yava barley can be used as samidha in yajna this is a utsarga ya samanya niyam apavad vakya apavad vakya in this particular yajna do not use tandul use only tilam these are the five types of statements we see in the vedas न तो वस्तु 
एवं न एवं अस्ति नास्ति इति वा विकल्पते इन द धर्म जिज्ञासा डू धिस डोंट डू धिस डू इट धिस वे डू नॉट डू इट दैट वे और आइदर वे यू कैन डू इट कर तुम अकर तुम अन्यथा वा कर तू दिस इज हाउ दी इंस्ट्रक्शंस आर गिवन दीज इंस्ट्रक्शंस आर फॉर धर्म जिज्ञासा द सेम वेदिक इंस्ट्रक्शन कैन नॉट बी यूज फॉर ब्रह्म ज्ञानम बिकॉज विकल्पान अस्तु पुरुष बुद्धि अपेक्षा विकल्प इज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय पुरुष बुद्धि न वस्तु यथात्म ज्ञान पुरुष बुद्धि अपेक्षम वस्तु इज नॉट डिपेंडेंट ऑन पुरुष बुद्धि दैट मीन्स वेन यू डू समथिंग लाइक कर्म वी डू कर्म इज पुरुष प्रधान ब्रह्म ज्ञान इज वस्तुतंत्र now we are coming to two important aspect called purusha tantrata vastu tantrata what is purusha tantrata what is vastu tantrata is the part of the further discussion in the shankara acharya's bhashyam on the second sutra the whole purpose of shankara acharya is to distinguish all other things or concepts we have in our mind including ishvara on one side and brahma gnana is a completely different vicharharya shastra based on indications given in vedanta provided all the upanishadic vedanta utterances are properly assimilated in the form of samanvaya is done then it gives a definite direction but shruti plus anubhava is brahmanubhava only shruti cannot be brahmanubhava that is why tukaram maharaj said vedansa to arth amhasi cha thava itarani bhava bharamatha what it means is tukaram maharaj says i know what veda is exactly trying to say for others it is the burden on the head hariyo ho पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्ण मुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ हरि ओम राजेन्द्र पोर्शन ऑफ ऑन द सेशन नाउ वी नो अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर लेवल आर वी कनिष्ठाधिकारी और मध्यमाधिकारी हाउ इज अवर लेवल नॉर्मल यू नो वेदांतिक स्टूडेंट्स वेर वी आर स्टैंडिंग इज इट आर वी कनिष्ठ और मध्यमा दैट इज वन क्वेश्चन एंड द फर्स्ट फाइव लॉस यू हैव जस्ट डिस्क्राइब्ड फ्रॉम वेदा इफ यू कैन बिकॉज आई जस्ट मिस इट इफ यू कैन पुट इट इन द ग्रुप दैट विल बी यूजफुल देर इज नो क्वेश्चन अबाउट being kanishta adhikari or if at all we are kanishta adhikari or not is the question madhyam adhikari is far beyond our scope at the moment madhyam adhikari is the one who has already matured in viveka and vairagya and is now attempting the shamadamaadi shatak and taking it to its logical conclusion moment viveka vairagya and shamadamaadi has been completed he enters into uttam adhikari stage so we to madhyam adhikari at all for the kanishta adhikari also whether we qualify or not depends upon how much the viveka and the vairagya has developed in us now a very simple question honest to ourselves that whether i have developed vairagya or not will give us a answer whether we are eligible to become kanishta adhikari or not our vairagya is so short so timid so rifle that we have billions of even by itself and might well 
विवेक एंड वैराग्य आर कॉम्प्लीमेंटरी स्टेटस मोर द वैराग्य विवेक ऑटोमेटिकली डेवलप्स और मोर द विवेक वैराग्य ऑटोमेटिकली डेवलप्स बिकॉज वॉट टू डिस्कार्ड यू विल कम टू नो वेन विवेक इज देर वाइल यू स्टार्ट डिस्कार्डिंग विवेक फर्दर डेवलप्स इट सेल्फ that is why we are yet to get out of this worldly activities we are drenched into it we are still get we, are, we get swayed by when we hear the satsang the thing for about our the air remain in the head after that we drop down again to the mortal level we do all the things which we are not supposed to do as per viveka vairagya that is why we are on a minuscule level our efforts are there on viveka vairagya front but majority of the time we are far away from viveka vairagya so we should strive hard to become kanishta adhikari first however because it is an paroksha gnana or intellectual exercise or panditya nothing stops up any first standard student can definitely go and sit into the phd class nobody will stop him from doing that however for him to really assimilate what the phd class is telling he has to go from first second third standard secondary school and degree then in the phd class so that is how there is no harm in knowing what is there in the phd class through bamr sutra stick so much of education so definitely exposure to bramh sutra is the most welcome thing that happens at least it gives us the depth that is required for the sadhana or one of the most important purpose of all these satsangas is to inculcate in us the feeling of inadequacy as per a spiritual practice is concerned if that is called nunyata to know one's own deficiency in spiritual field is called abhyudaya to know that you are spiritually not competent that itself is an achievement and in order to harp upon us again that we are spiritually inadequate we do this kind of satsanga so as far as adhikar is concerned in terms of acharyata or vicharyata we are yet to even the level of kanishta adhikar now if you want to know what are the definitions of different adhikaris it's a separate different discussion it is given in a book in a scripture called vichara sagar rahasya one of the most brilliant scripture on advaita vedanta describes all the adhikaris in detail who is a kanishta adhikari who is madhyama tama and what are their characteristic unfortunately we do not fit even into the kanishtha one are you okay hari om thank you thank you well as well thank you very much are you many more questions Hari Om. Uh, thank you, uh, Sanjay Ji. Actually, this uh, <clears throat> many times it comes to our mind that uh, you know how uh, many things are told to us to do this puja and that puja and all these times. Sometimes uh, is to get confused with respect to our understanding of uh, Vedanta and. Uh, Uh, but the when you face with some practical situations and whether to go this direction or that direction and all these things so one today's session has uh, really enlightened us uh, on the real uh, it is whenever there is a creation or whenever there is we are within the, the kala desha and nimitta uh, so we have to be under the you know uh, influence i mean or or the 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 niyanda niyanda's uh, 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 refuge we have to take and uh, as we progress or uh, beyond and that uh, is something which can be developed in that uh, or oh, with this shruti and why shruti is given and uh, to karam maharaj uh, statement why exactly i know what why shruti is given and why uh, 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 for others it is a burden and uh, it's a very very eye opener uh, information 
Uh, in fact, yesterday I was a bit confused about uh, things uh, in life. So this made very <laughs> clarity on this. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, you know, one of the member told me today that uh, this text is not for me. I am uh, not able to understand. Uh, sometimes it happens to me also. I, I totally put off uh, when these discussions go big because it, sometimes it feels uh, a bit of, um, tough to digest. But um, um, maybe I think as as it uh, depending on the state in which we are perceiving things and uh, uh, this can open up our uh, idea. So thank you very much for this clarity. Uh, and one yeah. more thing is there very 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 interesting thing is that for the first standard student can directly go up to the PhD. There is no restriction. That itself is a very big solace for us. I mean, you know, in between, if there is a restriction, we would have been in a problem. So because we don't have a, I mean, very systematic uh, progress. We, uh, by hit and run, we are learning here and there. Uh, there is no systematic studies taking place like in an ashrama. Uh, under this situation, this much freedom is given by spirituality or the great masters to go to the highest level, even for a layman. That itself is a great thing, I think, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Yeah. There are no more questions. We'll conclude, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.